Welcome back. You're watching Political Exchange. My guest tonight, of course, former Kenyan Prime Minister Raila Odinga. He's in the country, uh, participated in a conference of ISA looking at electoral politics on the continent. Uh, Mr. Odinga, Kenya has been making headlines globally. Um, the attack and the standoff between security forces and the um, terror suspects um, you know, brought home the kind of critical issues around uh, geopolitical matters and particularly the war against Islamist violence. Um, some people have suggested that Mr. Kenyatta's intelligence was flat-footed um, and was unable to penetrate uh, what seems to be a highly organized, highly planned, uh, you know, group uh, of people being able to engage the security forces over a period of days. Um, do you agree that the intelligence services failed to detect this threat? Well, um, I, I mentioned that uh, maybe this was not the time for the blame game, uh, that that time is coming, that um, a post-mortem is going to be carried out properly, uh, who slept on the job uh, mm -hmm. and where. Um, but one, of course, would wonder um, how the, uh, the attack of this magnitude could take place um, without any kind of forewarning or, or detection. What is interesting for me is um, the mall has intense security itself. You've got the, um, you know, technology to check for car bombs. You've got the technology to, you know, check for uh, terror attacks. This is not the first time that Kenya has dealt with this. We know the Mombasa attacks, you know, um, um, shook up Kenyan society. How was it able uh, for these armed group of people to get into a mall like Westgate Mall completely and utterly undetected. It sounds a little fantastic. Yeah, it's, you know that uh, very little information has actually been let out by the security forces right. as of now. But what is now known is that um, this is not something that happened spontaneously. Yes. Uh, that there was a lot of planning. Yes. That, for example, some of these people had hired some shops within the mall. Mm -hmm. and so it's uh, a long time coming. This is a long time coming. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why people are beginning to wonder uh, how come these arrangements were being made and nobody ever suspected mm -hmm. or, or detected mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that this was going to happen. Now, when we look at the message from the leader of Al-Shabaab, there was a clear call to Kenyans um, apart from the Kenyan government that for as long as Kenyan troops are in Somalia, ordinary Kenyans will take, um, will have to take responsibility and that their uh, political responsibility is to push for a withdrawal of Kenyan troops. How does a message like that from a group like Al-Shabaab go down among ordinary Kenyans? Are Kenyans behind the uh, government's efforts in Somalia um, or will the Westgate Mall incident uh, begin to make ordinary Kenyans question whether Kenyan troops ought to be in Somalia in the first place? Well, um, I think Kenyans also know about propaganda mm -hmm. uh, when they see it. Um, they know that uh, Al Shabaab is not a friend of the people of Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, that they would warn Kenyans of, of the danger that, that was coming. Um, they know also uh, the act of desperation uh, because. Uh, as Africans, they know the story of a wounded buffalo, yes. which is more dangerous <laughs> than the life, the whole one. Yes. Uh, the Al-Shabaab cannot be complimentary to us, given that Kenya was responsible for rooting them out yes. of their strongholds, mm -hmm. like in uh, Kismayu. The which was yeah, that was a very critical turning point. Yes, okay? the, the most uh, the turning point in the whole of that uh, mm -hmm. war against uh, terrorism mm -hmm. uh, in Somalia. So you can say that uh, the arrival of Kenyan troops in Somalia turned uh, the, uh, the, the 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 tide yes. against uh, Al Shabaab, and uh, from there on it was basically uh, a one confined. Yeah, they were just confined. Mm -hmm. But so this attack surely must have hit a psychological blow, given the precise nature in which it was planned. That was a long time coming. Mm -hmm. And of course, we know that with um, 
uh, terrorism, the, the way in which um, groups such as Al-Shabaab hit back is not conventional. It's not a conventional war that's being fought. Mm. Um, and of course, civilians are increasingly drawn in. Mm. Is the push against Al-Shabaab only um, driven by military offensive? Should there not be a longer political um, approach to dealing with the question of Al-Shabaab? Certainly, the, the, it has to be uh, political. Because if you, you just talk about retaliation, yes, there are too many opportunities to retaliate. I mean, it's a uh, zero-sum game, isn't it? It's a zero-sum game because mm -hmm. um, uh, to plan to go and, and bomb, say, a town or a, uh, a tea shop in Mombasa, and tomorrow you are doing another one in Busia and so on, that is so easy. Mm -hmm. You've seen it happen in Pakistan, yes, in Afghanistan, in um, uh, all those other countries, uh, you have got these suicide bombers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who have basically recent their uh, death sentence and they, they come to, to, to kill. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, we must uh, look forward we must, uh, uh, to a long-term engagement uh, with this terrorist movement. Mm -hmm. But my view is that the answer is not to surrender. Yes. Uh, to terrorism. So it's a multi-pronged strategy? Multi-pronged strategy to deal with this. We need to uh, train our people to sensitize them, to understand the kind of danger that we are opposed to, opposed, uh, exposed to as a result of what we have done in mm -hmm. Somalia. And they also to know that this is not a war against Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not Islam. Mm -hmm. in, our view. in fact, it's a perversion of the religion. Completely perversion of the religion. You see, like when they were at the mall, they were asking you which religion you profess, yes. and if you're Muslim, you're being let to go. This is an attempt to divide the country mm -hmm. along religious lines. Mm -hmm. And we have said that uh, Kenyans are much more intelligent than that. That is an interesting point that you make. Many people were worried that there might be retaliatory attacks because of the nature of the attack in the mall, um, that if you were Hindi, if you were Christian, that you were mowed down, but if you were Muslim, you were allowed to go. Um, given the fact that we've had violence related to political activity uh, off the back of elections in Kenya, what is your sense, Mr. Odinga, about the, the kind of uh, you know, pulse of the Kenyan uh, population. Do you think that there will be retaliatory attacks or have people shown the kind of maturity that you're speaking of? You see, this is not the first time that there's been an attempt to introduce religion. As a political division factor? Exactly. There was mm -hmm. one time some last year when there was an attack on a, on a church or churches in Garissa mm -hmm. town which is predominantly Muslim. Mm -hmm. This is the northeastern part occupied by some Kenyan Somalis who are mainly Muslims. Yes. Um, when I went into uh, that town mm -hmm. at that time... This was during your tenure as Prime yes, Minister? Yes, 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 yes. So I went there immediately after the attacks and told the people that this is not a religious war, mm -hmm. and that Kenyans cannot be divided along religious lines. The following Sunday, uh, when Christians were in the church praying, the Muslims gathered around the churches and protected. Yes, that was a very vivid image. It was captured all around the world. Yes, 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 yes exactly, yes. exactly. Mm -hmm. And they vowed to say that they will stand by their Christian brothers, mm -hmm. that Kenyans will not be divided along religious lines at all. Mm -hmm. You said earlier that now is not the time for blame game and that uh, Kenyans must unite against a common enemy. Mr. Odinga, what kind of support do you pledge to the government of, of, of Mr. Uhuru Kenyatta uh, at this time where, where Kenyans you know, have been uh, uh, hit a severe blow and where the leadership, certainly the political leadership of the country, uh, needs to demonstrate um, the ability to speak with one voice? The moment this incident uh, occurred, uh, we called each other with the president and agreed that we should get together mm -hmm. and show a sign of unity. Yes. And we did this we throughout the hostels mm -hmm. where the injured were being treated uh, together jointly. And we made an appeal uh, for blood donation and material support uh, mm -hmm. to the people of Kenya. Then we addressed uh, a press conference jointly 
and, and say that at the time like this, we must stand together. The, the big issue, of course, is the fact that the um, current head of state in Kenya is indicted at the International Criminal Court, and it does complicate matters severely because um, international governments appear to be hesitant to deal with uh, Mr. Kenyatta. Um, will the severity of the attack and the broader considerations around curbing Islamist violence um, in, in East Africa tilt the, uh, the scales um, in favor of a more cooperative stance with Mr. Kenyatta um, rather than still being seen to be distant? We know, for example, when President Barack Obama did his Africa visit, he didn't go to Kenya. Um, and many uh, alluded to the fact that it's because of those sensitivities. Well, um, as you know, Barack Obama has got Kenyan roots. Yes. And he has been to Kenya several times. So it is no, not only Kenya, he did not go to, sorry, he did not go to, he did not go to many other African countries. Yes. And um, the reasons why he did not come to Kenya are basically American strategic um, re interest reasons. Yes. Um, I am ready and willing to use my position mm -hmm. um, internationally in the lobbying for support for Kenya mm -hmm. at this very uh, difficult hour mm -hmm. uh, in our country's history. And um, uh, we, I will, we will be talking, discussing these issues uh, uh, as Kenyans um, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, the President Kenyatta. Mr. Odinga, does that position of um, having a Kenyan process led by Kenyans to deal with issues pertaining to what happened to you as a nation, does that find favor among um, the ruling coalition? Is that something that they would want to, uh, you know, embrace? Uh, what has been the indications? Um, have you been in discussions with them around it? We have not, as you know, uh, we, we are ready and willing to sit down and discuss uh, uh, way forward uh, with them if they um, uh, give us an opportunity if we, that we, we can sit down and talk. Mm -hmm. I have also proposed that we should have a, uh, a conference on the national security mm -hmm. uh, to discuss th these issues uh, because, as you know, uh, the danger is there, it's potential, and it's going to continue to be there. Right. And we must really look at our proper preparedness uh, nationally, mm -hmm. how we're going to protect our citizens against what has happened uh, mm -hmm. before. Now, final question, Mr. Otinga. The call that you're making is quite an impassioned one. It's a call for national unity, for leadership to um, rise above the petty differences. Do you believe that the political establishment in Kenya now displays that maturity and that you will be able to rise to the occasion in the interests of your people rather than the interests of your individual uh, political organization? We ourselves, of course, are for a national unity a, a strong united country mm -hmm. because as you know we have uh, formidable enemies uh, this by the way is not the first time that Kenya has been attacked uh, in this uh, manner you remember in 1998 yes we lost over 250 people uh, to the terrorist attacks and this was now the second one but we also continue to lose people in different parts of the country as a result of uh, banditry attacks mm -hmm. from across the border, from across the Ethiopia, Sudan. So there's a much larger security um, imperative to force leaders to come together. Mr. Odinga, we've run out of time. Thank you so very much for your uh, participation in our program.